Hello students! Today's live lesson will cover selected important topics from Lesson 5. I hope I can emphasize information that will assist you in comprehending the learning objectives and provide real-world applications. The learning objectives of each lesson are a useful tool to ensure comprehension of key concepts. First, let's briefly review the learning objectives of Lesson 5. After completing this lesson, you should be able to differentiate between goods production and service operations, explain the relationship between quality and productivity, define supply chain management, explain why businesses must manage information effectively, and identify the tools and methods used in different productivity and quality control systems. This live lesson will review the differences between goods and service operations, the relationship between quality and productivity, and define supply chain management. Today's first topic will be goods production and service operations. Operations or production refers to all activities involved in making goods and services for customers. It should be mentioned that the textbook interchanges the words operations and produ production freely. Now I will compare the two terms as seen on one page 166 in the textbook. Service operations provide intangible and tangible service products. Examples include entertainment, transportation, education, and communication services. Goods production is a firm that only makes tangible products. Examples include smartphones, vehicles, and textbooks. While both service and manufacturing f operations transform raw materials into finished products, in service operations, the raw materials are not things, but people who have unsatisfied needs. In a service operation, finished products or outputs are people with needs met and possessions serviced. The four aspects of service operations that can be made can make them more complex than goods production are interacting with customers, the intangibility and unstorable nature of some services, the customer's presence in the process, and service quality considerations. Due to the integral role of service jobs in the American economy, I think it is important to review each of these four aspects of service operations with examples. A gas company employee might speak on the telephone to a scared customer reporting a leak. Interpersonal skills are vital here. A service can be low contact, such as the United States Postal System, or high contact, such as a public transportation system. Also, services might be intangible and unstorable. A service typically cannot be touched, tasted, smelled, or seen such as an attorney's legal support. Usually, services also cannot be produced ahead of time and then stored for high demand periods. Trash collection and transportation are good examples of this concept. Another aspect of service operations is that the customer is usually present, such as receiving a haircut in a salon. Customers desire both quality of work and quality of service from a service operation. Here is a video link regarding the differences between goods and services. While it is strange that the speaker on this video pauses while writing the words on his blackboard, the video provides excellent examples. In order to understand on a more analytical level, let's now discuss how organizations create value through operations. While production provides business with economic results such as profits or wages, it also provides customer value by providing utility. Utility is the absence of a product. I'm sorry, utility is the ability of a product to satisfy a want or need in terms of form, time, and place. Production creates form utility by converting raw materials and human resources into finished goods and services. Time utility adds customer value by making products available when customers want them. Place utility makes products available when they are convenient for customers. So how does this occur in real life? 
Operations management is the systematic direction and control of activities that transform resources into finished services and goods that create value for and provide benefits to customers. Figure 7.1 on page 167 illustrates this point wonderfully as it shows how an operations manager might plan to transform resources into products. Next, we will briefly discuss how business strategy is the driver of operations. Production operations are adjusted to support the firm's target markets. The textbook highlights four business strategies, quality, low price, flexibility, and dependability. Table 7.2 on page 1671 describes key operational characteristics of these four business strategies. A quality business strategy focuses on high quality standards for material suppliers and just-in-time materials flow for lean manufacturing. The company example is Toyota. A low-cost business strategy depends on avoiding excessive overhead and costly inventory while reducing labor and shelving costs by receiving and selling merchandise out of custom shipping cartons. The company example is Save-A-Lot. A flexible business strategy maintains some excess production capacity available for fast startup on new products and adaptable facilities for production changeovers from new at to old old to new products. The example, company example is 3M. A dependable business strategy might utilize customer automation tools and wireless information systems. This company example is FedEx. The final example for today's lesson will be adding value through supply chains. This section starts on page 185 in the textbook with an ec excellent visual aid, figure 7.7. .7. A supply chain or value chain for any product is the flow of information, materials, and services that starts with raw material suppliers and continues adding value through other stages in the network of firms until the product reaches the end consumer. Supply chain strategy is, the, is based on the idea that members of this chain will gain competitive advantage by working as a coordinated unit. Supply chain management looks at the chain as a whole to improve the flow through a system composed of companies working together. Process improvements and re-engineering often are applied in supply chains to lower costs, speed up service, and coordinate flows of information and materials. As a related topic, outsourcing is the strategy of paying suppliers and distributors to perform certain business processes or to provide needed materials or services. The movement of manufacturing and service operations from the United States to countries such as China, Mexico, and India has reduced U.S. employment and traditional jobs, but created new operations jobs for supply chain management. The result for outsourcers is a greater need of operation skills for integration among dispersed facilities. Here is a quick video link about the importance of response time in supply chain management. In my experience, quick response time to trends and seasonal items can greatly improve a company's success. I have created a small check your understanding section similar to the online presentations to help you verify your comprehension. You can review the answers on the next slide. Thank you for watching today's video. Please reach out to me via the chat room or email if you have questions. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.